Well, um, I have, I'm really excited tonight because uh, I met Annie, oh gosh, a number of years ago already. She's yeah. a, a native Pittsburgher. However, she had just come back from Oregon where she was living and uh, working as an artist. And I met her at Radiant Hall. Uh, she has a studio there and they had an open house where you could just walk through and see, poke around to see what everybody was doing. And I was absolutely blown away by her artwork. She had all these amazing paintings of children and these um, you know, almost abstract settings. And um, since then I've bumped into her at Three Rivers Arts Festival. She's at uh, Box Art Gallery represented there. She uh, is really, really, I think taken off in the Pittsburgh area, which makes me very happy. And I guess Annie too. But um, she ha has a wonderful style of painting, and she's going to share her process for a portrait with us tonight. So, Annie, go go on, and um, let's see what you have tonight. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Hi, guys. Thanks for inviting me. Um, so, basically, I've got two setups happening. This is me. This is the panel I'm going to be painting on, so you should be able to see my hand in both now. Um, and uh, you'll just have two views that way. Um, what I'm going to do with you guys tonight is something that, real quick, I'm going to show you the wall over here. Um, I've been doing a portrait project where I've had people send me um, portraits of, or photos of themselves, uh, like facing forward with a neutral expression. It started as like a random thing, then became, it, it got all these like different layered meanings on it um, once the pandemic started. And then with all the strife of, you know, the election and politics and other things. So um, what I'm gonna be doing tonight is starting one of those paintings and they're all six inches by eight inches. Um, Usually, if I'm doing a large piece, like for instance, this one behind me, to the commission that just got finished yesterday, um, you can see that I will usually do some kind of a study to figure out, you know, where I'm laying things out. I'm sure a lot of you guys do the same. When I'm doing these guys, I don't, um, I don't really have a plan outside of the fact that I make a. Uh, just like a color palette for myself, just to limit and rein things in. The whole way this really started was to just have different faces to play with different color palettes about them. So they've been very colorful, which has been really fun. Um, and I'm just gonna paint with you for a while <laughs> and start a new one. Um, as I'm doing it, uh, feel free to like stop and ask a question um, if you've got a question or, um, about any of the process. Like I'm planning on sort of narrating what I'm doing, um, but you know, there might be, I probably won't talk continuously cause I just don't know that I <laughs> could, but um, totally feel free to chime in and ask a question about anything really. Um, Are you working in oils, Annie? I am working in oils, yeah. I'm working in oils. I've got my all of these mixed up and laid out on my palette. That's what I was doing while I was listening to your meeting, which was actually really informative and great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm working in oils. And um, the first thing I always do, it's really interesting to me. I love watching like Instagram, like time lapse videos of people painting and drawing. Okay. So. I have uh, the photo, this is back here, my iPad's mounted to the wall, and that's where I have my reference photos come up, and I uh, transformed, what did I, I made, filtered the photo um, to be black and white, so that I can use invented color, and I'm not feeling really stuck to the color that I see in the photo. Um, if I don't do that, I just automatically start pulling the colors in the photo into the painting and I can't like turn it off. So that's the best way I've found to work with like a limited color palette is just to get rid of all the color totally. Um, so 
When I start a painting, I always put a really, I just tone the, the I work on board, um, birch board, and I tone the board with a like really thin layer of some color. Lately, I've been really into yellow ochre. It gives sort of like a nice warm undertone. Um, and then I just start to pull out the shape of the face and lay things out on uh, on the board. And what I'm using as a tool right now is a catalyst silicon wedge. I have I have like smaller ones that I also use sometimes that are like on sticks like a paintbrush, but this is my go-to guy. Um, it's funny when I discovered this a couple years ago, it really changed the way that I put paint on it on board. It doesn't work for me as well on canvas, which is one of the reasons that I switched to board. But um, so right now I'm just pulling out the highlights that I can see and starting to sort of figure out where Dan's face is going to go. This is actually somebody I know, but it's been really cool um, to have all these people send me photos. I mean, I have somebody from India, I have somebody from Ireland, I have people like from all over that I don't know um, who have sent in photos for this project, which is really cool. Um, but this guy's local. How many do you hope to have when you're finished, Danny? You know, I don't have like a set thing. Right now, I think I have like 31. Um, uh, like finished, but I, well, I have almost like a hundred total photos that people have sent to me. So I guess we'll see. <laughs> I'm hoping to do, you know, anybody who sends me a photo, I'm hoping to make a painting eventually. And uh, I'm thinking I'll probably have, you know, a show of them at some point all together. And um, also, I don't know, I think it would be super cool if I could figure out how to self-publish a book of them. <laughs> That is a very, um, something I have no idea how to do. So, you know, uh, that was suggested to me by somebody and I thought, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Um, how, how the hell do you do that? <laughs> so, we'll see. Um, so, now that I've got the highlights sort of figured out, I'm just trying to lay in major areas of shadow or just where things are on his face so I can start to get an idea of the structure that I'm looking for. Um, but I am probably going to go into my actual color at this point and start laying in some, uh, some areas of light and shadow. And when I choose a color palette, I usually try to get, it depends. I mean, one of the reasons that I uh, wanted to start doing these was because I really wanted to push like color relationships and the way that I use color. But so, so sometimes I'm purposefully using, you know, really close colors or, um, you know, a very limited range of values, but today we've got a pretty full range. And these are just, I go down the street to Busy Beaver and they're really nice that they just let me snag <laughs> their pink color swatches all the time. Uh, so I have a little, I, I've graduated to like an organized thing with little drawers that I have, you know, reds and oranges all of those things together. Um, but I've got oh, so many paint swatches. It's so fun. That's a pretty big brush you got going there. 
Yeah. Um, this is my current favorite brush. I have more than one of the same brush because it just makes it easier if I have a brush that I really like to not have to like clean it between colors, you know. Um, and, but that's uh, one of the things I used to do while I was teaching. I would uh, just walk around the room and if somebody was like, it, <laughs> it, especially with beginning painters, they try to fill like this whole area with this tiny little brush and you're just like, why? Stop it. And I would walk around and ask them, if somebody was doing that, I would just say, hey, do you have other brushes? And they would be like, oh yeah, I have all these. And I'd be like, oh great. And I'd snag everything except the biggest one. And I'd say, I'll be back in 10 minutes. And they get really, really mad. And it's really fun. It's one of my favorite things to do as a teacher to just be mean to my students, I guess. <laughs> but um, yeah, I tend to, I don't know, everybody paints differently. I really, um, brush technique is one of those things that I think people learn as they develop and it's always sort of um, expanding. I was just looking at a painting that I, I don't really have any of my own artwork up in my house usually, but there was a painting of our dog that I did for my husband for like a couple years ago. And I was looking at it today and I was like, oh wow, that, like, that looks so different from how I would do it now. <laughs> really weird. Do you repaint the same photograph or do you just move on and once you've done one? Like ever or for this specific? Well, if, if you look at it and say, wow, I could have done that a different way or I you know, matured or I changed my style, would you go? Oh, yeah. I've, um, if you look closely at my website or my Instagram feed, you'll see, well, A, like similar, uh, similar subjects popping up, but also, You'll, you'll see repeated photos. I, I, you know, I can paint the same photo three or four times and get a totally different feeling, a totally different thing, um, depending on like how I decide to put it in the frame or, um, you know, the color palette is a huge thing. But also in, you know, this, in my work, I do a lot of bringing in, um, other imagery so for instance like the study that i showed you guys at the beginning is um like the source photo for that was just the little boy with the cape and you on a beach so i added in another source photo that was uh of like a crazy stormy sky and then I also um, <coughs> then I made I had another I think I, I think the dragons I got off of like a uh, off of a statue um, is where I snacked the dragons from and that was super fun. I was really nervous about painting cloud dragons because I had no idea how I was going to pull that off, but it worked pretty well. I feel like. So you, do you keep each brush with just one color on it? A lot, um, not always, but, and that's also sort of a newer, um, a newer practice <laughs> that I've sort of developed. Um, but uh, yeah, oftentimes I do. It's just easier than constantly washing and wiping. Um, Especially if I'm doing something where I have like, you know, a set thing of colors, but um, for years and years, I would just, I never mixed my colors ahead of time. I would never like, um, 
you know, watched other people do it all the time, but I just was like, that's insane. I'm, you know, not using a palette knife and I would mix all my colors with my brush. And I, at this point, don't know how I ever did that, but you know, everybody does it, everybody does their thing differently. And that's why it's so interesting to me to um, like watch time lapses on Instagram of people painting and stuff because um, every, you know, there's, there are as many ways to make a painting as there are people trying to make paintings. So <laughs> probably even more than that. Um, you know, it just depends on what, what makes sense for you. And, but, and all of this, these changes in the way you, you painted, they stemmed from um, this interest you had in color and your relationship to color and the way to use it. Those seem like those are such um, not big things, but they're they're very different. Like for instance, I use one brush, I wipe it, I clean it, I mix the paint as I'm painting. So you have you're doing it. You've made these kind of big jumps to to do it differently. And I'm curious to know: Did you get there all at once, or did you just start first with mixing the color, and then later on you were like, "This doesn't make any sense to me. I might as well have a bunch of different brushes uh, that are the I same." Um, I, how did that process? Occur? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I talked over you. What was that? Go ahead. Oh, I just wondered, like, how did these changes sort of come about? Was it that you? first you began used buying um, many of the same brushes or was it first that you started to mix all your color up at the same time because you've kind of gone from like this I'll, I'll call it the way I paint kind of a messy style of painting into a very organized very clean sort of style of painting and how did that develop in that process from this exploration into color um, I think honestly, the beginning of it was more a change in my materials. When I started to use like wedges and palette knives to create texture in my um, images, like visual texture, uh, I realized that I needed to mix with like a palette knife. I needed to mix up enough paint to then drag the wedge through and drag it on the board. So that sort of started the whole mixing with a palette knife. And then um, I was teaching at the Oregon College of Art and Craft out in Portland, Oregon, which sadly no longer exists, um, but it was there for a hundred years. Uh, and it was a great school. Um, and it, one of the professors there, uh, who was sort of my mentor, uh, was Georgiana Neal, who I think considers herself like a colorist. Um, she's, I think she's more of a dry media person really than like uh, than painting, but she taught this amazing class called Color and Process. Um, and she had an extra section, so she needed a co-teacher to teach the other section. And I took that on. And in teaching the class, I basically also got to take the class. And um, I think that class really changed the way that I thought about a lot of things in my practice. You know, she had this lesson called Invented Color where the kids, kids, whatever, some of them were older than me, the students were, <laughs> you know, uh, taking an image and uh, deciding what was important, you know, deciding what was important, inventing color, like keeping some elements, changing some elements. Um, and it, it was, a, it was a, le a lesson that like, it was a project that really lasted over like a, a series of weeks. Um, and, it, and that project, I feel like particularly, really changed the way that I thought about using color and really opened up the possibility of like, oh, I can make up. I always liked exaggerating the colors that I saw, but I, I, that's when I sort of started choosing different palettes and trying different things. 
Um, and that really led to, you know, the more that I decided to start controlling my color, the, the more I decided that I was going to um, <coughs> mix up my colors beforehand and then mixing up my colors beforehand, then I, uh, you know, then I had these like things where I thought, you know, I use this brush all the time. I should just get more of this brush. Um, and then as I was getting more of that brush, it was like, oh, now that I have another one of that brush, I don't have to wash that brush off between these things. I only have this many colors. I don't know. I, I've never thought about it, so it's a really good question. <laughs> I think that, uh, Kelly? Hmm? What'd you say? Um, and I don't know if you guys bop around an image or if you work like top to bottom. And that's also like always an interesting question that I'm not sure I know my own answer to because it's not the same every time either. But um, I feel like I sort of move around most of the time. It's not like I finish one thing before I get to another thing specifically, but. Hey guys, does somebody have a television on or something? Maybe you could mute yourself. Or no. You know, it, the, I think, I think your work is, this is just amazing to watch this and to see this um, face emerge in basically it's been like half an hour of 45 minutes and it's so painterly it, it's so rich and and lovely it's really really interesting thank you um you know one of the things that I really noticed as I I've been I've been painting for 20 years now, um, probably, but I didn't become like a full-time artist until probably three years ago. And being able to paint every single day has also made a really huge difference just in like, like the speed of which I do things and, you know, the agility of my brush work or whatever, you know, like doing it every day has made a, a huge difference in like my practice. And I am so lucky. I don't know if I'll always be able to, uh, you know, continue to support myself just on my painting, but I'm gonna ride this out for as long as I can because it's pretty great. Um, but that has also made a big difference. Like just the more, the more regular I stay in my studio practice, the more um, the more I find like I have like just like an ease of of flow. But I'm what brand? What brand? Oh, sorry. What what brand of brushes do you use? I God, what do I use? Summit. I know they're all worn off. Princeton Summit. They're like white, um, they start out white, they always take the phthalo and leave the rest of the colors behind. But um, white synthetic. Yeah. Um, I really like to be, I use a lot of straight brushes right now, um, straight edges or angled. I really like to be able to get like a clean edge. Um, and so like, uh, what am I saying? If I were doing like, um, if I were using like hog hair brushes or something, it's a nightmare. <laughs> just like I hate it. Um, because, you know, a natural brush has just different 
it has a lot more texture along the edge and you don't get really like a clean clean edge but that's a total preference thing obviously and you use turpentine as your as your uh as your liquid um i use gamsol as my solvent and then i also um when i mix my colors beforehand i use uh right now because i just switched it up right now i use a mixture of gamsol and like linseed or walnut oil um uh as like a a medium i guess but if i need to like thin out my paint because sometimes i do really thin um layers of things then i'm just probably using like straight gamsol and uh, i have i hope I, I have one more question at when you when you sit down to do one of these little paintings, do you complete it in one setting? And if you don't, how hard or easy is it for you to remix the same color palette? Or do you just mix up a lot and save it? Um, I have no problem remixing the same color palette. Um, I, uh, I, you know, teaching color theory for years and mixing paint every day. I can usually nail it pretty fast. Um, I don't always do them all in the same sitting. Sometimes they come together like that. Most times it's probably like two sessions. There's one that I still haven't, I think it's done, but like I still haven't posted it anywhere because it's been driving me insane. Like I just can't seem to like grab this guy's expression. And he's not someone that I've ever met. So all I have to go on is the photo, which has also been an interesting thing for me um, to like find that sometimes if I know someone, it's harder almost for me to paint them because I have like certain aspects I'm trying to like load into the painting. Whereas if I don't know someone, Sometimes it's easier to just like be removed, but um, I don't know. It's been a really interesting experience, especially because I've done, I mean, you can like that painting behind me is a self-portrait. I do a lot of self-portraits. I do a lot of paintings of my family, um, my sister's kids. My sister's a photographer and she has three kids. Um, and I steal a lot of her photos so that I can put them into paintings. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's been interesting to be painting people that I don't don't at all know. It's a different experience. And exciting because it really has connected me with you know a lot of people. And it's also um I was really like surprised and really just thrilled that so many people were interested in sending me their face. Um, the biggest problem, I guess, actually, that I've been having is now that after I do one, the person who it's of or someone who loves them wants to buy it and I want to keep it and have it in a show. <laughs> so, <laughs> I guess I would never say that selling paintings is a problem, but uh, that also surprised me a lot. Do you ever make prints of your paintings to sell? I do. I sell a lot of prints, actually. Um, and I just opened a shop on my website, which I will shamelessly plug as Annie. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I get my prints. I did a lot of research and I actually use a company online that's based in Texas. So they never see my original piece. I send them a photo that I have taken and uh, the, the company is called Finer Works, F-I-N-E-R-W-O-R-K-S. 
prints.com. Um, so if you're looking to do prints, the reason I like doing it that way is that I found, um, you know, a lot of print shops want to, maybe not anymore, but when I started making prints, a lot of print shops wanted to um, scan the, you know, scan the actual piece, which I'm sure they had reasons for, but they, you know, that was cost prohibitive to me to pay what, however, I think somewhere it was like as much as $80 for the initial scan. And I didn't need that because I was confident enough in like my, um, my photo skills to just go ahead and take my own photos and send in the thing. But they've been really great customer service wise and also just, um, you know, I, I've never had a problem with them matching colors. I've had a problem with me taking crappy photos and then getting <laughs> the print and being like, oh, not right. <laughs> but um, I've never really had an issue with that. Do you guys ever sell, like how many of you guys sell prints of your work? Anybody? Nope. No? I think we've done not some. Many. Uh, not quite there yet, uh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's totally fair. <laughs> it's been, uh, it's been good for me because at this point, you know, to be a full-time artist and do things the way that I want to do them, I need my prices to be a certain, at a certain level. And that's a level that is, I think still reasonable, but at the same time, it's definitely out of, it would be out of my own price range. Like if I ask myself for my commission details, I mean, if I really wanted one, I could figure out how to pay for a small one, but like, I, I, I don't like being so inaccessible. I think everybody should have access to, you know, different art. And one thing that Prince lets me do is really like, you know, somebody says, oh, I love that painting, you know, but it's huge and it's $3,000. Well, I can make you a print of it for 45 if you're interested. And then you can live with it too. And it's amazing. So that's a really good good thing for me. And then I just started doing, what is it? Uh, I did, I'm making these postcards because I also do a lot of paintings of uh, Pittsburgh. Um, so I've been doing these postcard packs the, of like my Pittsburgh paintings. And that's been really fun. And, um, that's been like a way to also like give somebody, you know, something they could if they wanted, like put in a little four inch by six inch frame, but um, they're just really neat. I get those from Moo though, um, which is also where I get my business cards and my uh, uh, like promotional materials or whatever. Do you guys have any questions about anything that I've been doing? I'd like to know where you're working from. Or do you have a studio or is this your house? Oh, this is a studio. Um, so I have a studio in Radiant Hall, which is in Lawrenceville. Um, I wish this was like more in, is it in focus enough? Yeah, I guess so. Um, I have a studio in Radiant Hall in Lawrenceville, um, which is amazing. Um, we had the, you know, we closed when we did, or when the pandemic started and um, for like two months we were closed and I was painting out of my house and that was super less than ideal. I live in a row house that is not very big with my husband and two dogs and a cat. And uh, there wasn't anywhere, I was like painting the basement for a while um, and that was, 
terribly depressing because we have a really depressing basement. <laughs> and then, uh, so then we moved it. We moved me up to like our spare bedroom, but there wasn't like a lot. There was more light, but there wasn't a lot of space. I couldn't do anything bigger than like 16 by 20. Um, so actually, when I moved back to Pittsburgh in 2000 and like the beginning of 2016, um, before I got a job or did anything, like the first thing I did was uh, rent a painting studio. And at that point, I think I was in 412 Studios in Aetna, um, because they were just more affordable for where I was at at that time. But, um, uh, yeah, I've always, I've always really found that for me, I need to prioritize having a space that's not my house to make work because it just then it feels more like I'm going to do my job there's no way to be well I mean I have like three <laughs> potential like digital sources here I guess so I could watch Netflix but you know it's, it's not like I'm gonna like take a break and get stuck into my couch and like a nap is my job um it it you're coming and you're here for a certain purpose and I can then be here and have that purpose. And that's been a good thing for me. Plus I'm super duper messy. Um, so that's also not great. I know that somebody said that like, this is a very clean process, which I think is awesome because I never, I've, I've never been accused of being clean in my life. How many hours a day do you spend there? Do you paint like for hours and take a break or do you, are you there like all day long? I usually start later. I do like house stuff in the morning. I usually get here between like 11 and 1230. And then I can be here anywhere from, you know, it's, it depends. Painting is such a, I think probably any creative um, endeavor. Yes, some days you can just come and put in the work and you don't need to be like wonderfully inspired. But, you know, oftentimes if, if you're not feeling it, if it's not going well, you know, you need to leave for a little while and regroup. Um, it's definitely a sort of fickle, um, Difficult thing to do. So, you know, some days I'll come here, I'll be here for a couple hours, and then I'll just go home and maybe I'll do website stuff or, you know, maybe I will answer emails or apply to calls, but maybe I'll just like, I don't know, do laundry. Um, and some days I'm here for like 10 hours. It just depends. Um, usually I would say like five or six hours is like a good day um, because it's also. It's, it's demanding in a different way than a lot of other things. You need to be, if you're doing it at like your, your best way, I, I find that at least for me, I need to be um, focused. And if I'm really focused, um, it's mentally and physically exhausting sometimes, you know, I don't, I don't really sit down when I paint. That's not a thing that I like to do. I like to paint on a wall. Um, and so, you know, standing for however many hours, I have a really nice, I invested in a nice, like, sort of restaurant pad <laughs> to stand on. Um, but it is, I mean, it's, it's tiring and it's sometimes very emotional and sometimes very, um, you know, you, you'll get lost in a painting for however much time, but then when you come out, you're just like drained for me. And, but, you know, also some days I'm just here and like, okay, I have to, I just have to make this background happen or why can't I make this child look like her photo? Her parents aren't gonna want it if it doesn't look like her or whatever, you know? <laughs> so it just depends. Why do you choose to paint on a wall over using an easel? 
I, hmm, that's a tough question, and I am not totally sure when I started doing this. I think probably because when I was in college, uh, we had, you were in the BFA program, so you had applied to be in the BFA program and um, gotten in, and there was like a limited number of us. We each had a studio, but we had to share it with another person, and it was not very big. Um, and so there wasn't like a bunch of room to have an easel in there. And I started just putting work on the wall and working on it. And that just seemed to make more sense. Um, and like it, it, just like my process has evolved, like my accoutrement have evolved. I now have like, this is my palette table, but it's pretty big. You can see the colors that I'm working with and the ones laid up at the top. And, you know, I've been through three studios in this building alone because I sort of kept expanding. Um, and that has been, I've been really lucky to be able to do that. But um, I don't know why I paint on the wall. I just do. I hate easels. Like when I try, I had to use an easel at my house. I don't know. I feel like they always like fall down on me or like a knock them over. Maybe I'm just too clumsy to use an easel. That could be it. But um, I, just, I like wall painting. Do you, do you listen to music when you paint? Or I anything? I listen to audio books, but oh. sometimes I listen to music. Um, sometimes I listen to nothing. If I find that like my brain is racing a bunch, I just need to like unplug and listen to like the brush on the board. But um, most of the time I listen to like podcasts or audio books. I, I don't know why that's like, seems like a different part of my brain. Um, to like what I'm using for painting, but it sort of turns off the stuff I don't need so that I can focus on what I'm doing. Plus, if I'm listening to like a really good audio book, it will make me want to stay at the studio longer. <laughs> so I can keep figuring out what's gonna happen next. So that's also like a, a good incentive, I guess. <laughs> Annie, one of the uh, comments that we have in the chat is that it's really cool how the unconditional palette of colors for a portrait aren't causing any battle with their eyes or mind. Uh, the experience just allowing uh, him to accept uh, the as it is natural as compared to the standard portrait blends of colors. Um, yeah, it, you know, it, that's something that I have found in other people's work that I really like. Um, and when I, you know, I've been teaching and stuff, I, um, and people want to like expand their colors, especially within like the figure. Um, it's surprising how much you can get away with as long as you've nailed the value. And then how do you select the value when you're looking at the palette so when you compare it to the grade? <laughs> um, let me think. Usually I'm looking for something pretty light, something pretty dark, and then I want sort of a, something in like the mid range just so that I have those options. But if you like check out my Instagram feed, you'll see some of these portraits where I've really like um, purposefully not uh, had a full range of value where I've kept everything really close um, to see what happened. Um, and some of the ones on the wall eh, are closer than others, but um, what I feel like I'm usually looking for is just something that feels like the, either the personality of the person or the vibe that I'm getting from the photo. Um, or uh, sometimes I will, 
Like I take pictures all over the place. I take screenshots of other people's work on my Instagram feed. I take photo. I just took a photo yesterday on like a walk of a uh, like a slate bluish house that the paint was peeling and the like red brick was behind it. And then right next to that was like this mint green door. So I have that in my phone as like a color palette to reference. Um, yeah, I just, anywhere that, anytime I look at something and, and get like a, woo, that, that looks really fun or that looks juicy or I wanna see if I can make that happen. Um, I just sort of find a way to store it for later. And I have a whole like, album in my photos on my phone was just called inspiration and that's where all of those like paintings from other people or random house combos or other things live and that also helps because sometimes um you know you don't you're not feeling awfully inspired like <laughs> um you gotta if, if you get an idea, I feel like, at least for me, if I have an idea, if I have something that's, you know, really exciting that I can't, you know, immediately work on, I need to save it somewhere because there, more often than not, I am sort of like, oh, what am I going to even do today? <laughs> and then I think, oh, I can go look through, you know, these saved photos and try to if there's something in there that sparks an idea or an interest. Tim, did I get, am I getting farther along than you thought I would? I think this looks great. I'm very excited. Progress. Hey, good. Yeah, this one actually is coming together pretty smoothly. Although there's like, I'm sure I have, you know, like his nose is completely in the wrong place and I just haven't figured it out yet, but that's always a depressing realization. <laughs> Another one of our comments is that it uh, it's amazing to watch the colors transform and blend to the face that is emerging. So, in a way, that is also always amazing to me because I don't always know what's going to happen. And these guys are these little portraits are so fun because they're just play. Um, you know, I'm getting to to play with the paint, and I think play is where most creativity works best and um, and I've been able to bring a lot of ideas or exciting things from you know the way that the brush strokes happen or the values happen or the colors happen um, into bigger pieces um, or commissions, and that's also been something that's been a really nice discovery. That was the hope, I guess, when I started this uh, project. But yeah, if any of you guys want to be part of the project, feel free to send me a photo. <laughs> and maybe someday you'll be in the mythical book that I'm going to somehow figure out how to self-publish. It'll be so fun. <laughs> this is our big chance. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you always wanted to be in a book. I'd say, how could any of us say no to that? I'd love to see what you would come up with with uh, <laughs> all of us. <laughs> you just may have to be patient because <laughs> I'm also like, it's funny. I'm not going like, I feel bad because I'm not going chronologically and I'm not going like, by, you know, oh, I know them, so I'm going to make, you know, this is my best friend since high school, whose painting I'm getting to soon, but like, um, <laughs> I'm just sort of choosing what 
what strikes my my fancy that day. Um, so do you have people bugging you, like what when's mine coming kind of thing? Thank God no one has. Yet. <laughs> but I feel so guilty. <laughs> Look at the you know the folder that I have of um of images and they think, oh I can't. They sent me that so long ago. I bet they're wondering where their face is. I'm really hoping that I can follow it through and and get uh, get to all of them because I don't know. Now it feels like I made a deal with people and I'll be falling down on my end of it if I don't make all the paintings. And also, like this size has been really good for me because I've uh, found that um, just like this size of portrait, I can I can usually do in like a, like one or two sittings. Like I said, there's a couple that have really fought with me, but most of the time it's big enough for me to like get into the, you know, the meat of the face, like the face is big enough, but it, the whole thing is small enough that it can take forever just to like cover the surface area. How often do you guys meet? We're once a month and then we take a break for the summer. And normally we meet in person out at Robin Hill Park in Moon, but because of COVID, we've had to switch to uh, Zoom sessions. Yeah. You know, do during the um, year, we also uh, try to share opportunities for uh, gallery shows or you know, co competitions or everybody likes to know what's going on in the area and what they can take advantage of. So it, it's a nice group to uh, meet up and share. Yeah, that's awesome. You should join us. You should join our group. <laughs> I don't live We're in the fun. West Hills. Do I have to live in the West Hills? That's okay. No. Kim doesn't live in the West Hills. She lives Kelly, in the North Hills. Kelly, tell her where you live. I live in Costa Rica. No, uh, really? I do. Yeah, and that's my mom. So I'm, hi, mom. <laughs> yeah. So the Zoom meetings have made this possible for me to hi. participate. That's so cool. I always wanted to go to Costa Rica. Come visit. You can come to our art fair on Saturday. <laughs> tell, her, tell her how warm it is. Uh, it must be like 95, 96. So we're getting into the really, really hot season. And now it gets a little breezy. So these like sudden gusts of wind, like the tent I was using on Saturday completely turned over upside down. Oh it's my gosh. Fun, though. It's just a little different than the snow. <laughs> Yeah, there <laughs> was one day, uh, one year, the Pittsburgh Arts Festival where I really thought I was going down. It didn't happen, but it almost did. It was like so windy. And if I had had my actual tent, I would have been screwed, but I was borrowing a better tent from a friend. <laughs> much sturdier, so I was lucky, lucky in that. Thank you, Matthew. Yes, it happened very quickly. The next thing I knew, it was up. It was upside down, and it was rolling over. And oh my God! Came to the different booths and grabbed it, and they put it upright, and we staked it into place. Yeah, I've, I, I've I, seen people go down. Uh, what is this thing? <laughs> Outdoor art fairs are exciting. <laughs> I really missed the uh, Three Rivers Art Fair this year. So it's just been such a weird year. Do you ever paint portraits from life? You always use photos. I 
sometimes do and have done in the past a lot, but I have found that for what I do and the types of things I like to paint, um, especially because I like to paint a lot of like active poses, um, you know, something that's going to put it just like cold. Um, it is really helpful to work from photos. And also then I can work on my own time. I think probably, well, no, because I painted some photos then too. But um, uh, one of the reasons that I have done a lot of self portraits in my time is that like, if I wake up at two o'clock in the morning and I have a really great idea for a painting, I'm available as a model. So I can take the photo or whatever. And it's sort of the same thing that like, you know, you don't always know when inspiration is going to strike you. And I don't like having to be on anybody else's schedule. But um, I, what I really love doing and haven't been able to do, especially not since COVID, is uh, like um, life drawing from a model. So I do a lot of, or I have done a lot of that. And I think, especially for people starting out painting, um, having the experience of working from a, a human being is super important because a photo is great in that it like captures that moment and that's what it's doing. But, um, it's just not quite, I don't know, it, it also flattens a lot of things out. And when you're working from a real person, uh, you, get, you get to see all the things, you get to move around them. You can see like why that shape is happening if you move like, you know, four centimeters to the left or whatever. Um, but I think for me at this point, I am, I've been, I've been working with, you know, people long enough that mm -hmm. a photo doesn't grow me in the same way that it would have if I had started from photos, if that makes any sense. Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> um, and, you know, there's just a lot of things that I like to do, like, you know, removing the color from something that I could not do in real life. So I don't know, I, I sort of ended up building my practice around working from photos. Um, but I don't know, I also feel like that's like a, often like a preference thing. I hate painting glasses. They never end up symmetrical. <laughs> but we'll see how this goes. It's really nice how you just suggest them, though. That's true. Also, these glasses are like translucent, clear glasses, basically, which I haven't, I don't think I've painted very many translucent glasses now that I think of it. Um, also, I'm already too high. Well, we're getting there. <laughs> Looks great. 
think? I haven't been paying any attention to the time. Where are we looking at? Um, it's amazing. You, you've been at it what, a little over about an hour. Okay. Um, I mean, you're the artist. You tell us when you're done. I can keep going for a little while yet if you guys are still interested. Um, I'm fine with you going. Okay. Yeah, I can go for a little longer. Although I have to mix up more of the green because I used it all. I knew I was going to use all the green. Um, I mean, that's kind of a big dilemma for a lot of artists, too, especially when you're doing something like what you're doing. When do you declare it done? <laughs> um, that is a huge question. Um, huh. You know, a lot of people I know work um, uh, work on multiple paintings at once. And I tend to work through, like, I tend to work on one until it's done and then move to the next one. Not all of the time, but a lot of the time. Um, I think I think it's done, the best way that I can explain it is, um, and I think I got this from Alex Konevsky, who is a Philadelphia-based painter um, he's amazing. You, if you don't know who he is, you should look him up. It's K-A-N-E-V-S-K-Y, Alex Tanevsky. Um, uh, but he, I read like a, an interview that he did one time where, uh, where he was talking about like, when is it done and, and how do you sort of figure that out and deal with that. And, um, he said that he thinks of paintings as sort of a conversation. Like you put down a mark or you have an intention to put down a mark, but then that mark might do something that you weren't expecting. Um, or maybe it did exactly what you wanted it to, but once it's there, it's not what you want it to be. Um, and so it's sort of a conversation between your intent and what the painting is giving back to you. And um, once there's no argument anymore, then it's done. Like when, <laughs> when you, you know, you put down something and then you look at it and you decide, is there anything jumping out at me that like, that I, that I can't live with? Like I don't, that's driving me nuts or blah, 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 or whatever. And when there's nothing, in the painting that you're looking at it and it feels like it's fighting with you, then it's probably done. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Well, it's a very artsy fartsy way to put it and it will <laughs> probably drive some of you insane, but um, it's the best explanation I found for the way that it works. Like it, it really like, when I talk to people who aren't painters and um, you know, they, you know, they say like, well, you know, how long does it take you to make a painting? And I'm like, totally depends on the painting. Not even like the size or other things. It's just like, how is it going to go today? And um, there's also like, uh, you know, like when, yeah, you know, like when is the painting done? Well, it's just, yeah, it, the a painting I feel like has its own thing that it wants to be. Like when I say to somebody. Well, I was trying to make it be this, but that's not what I wanted to be. And they look at me like I'm insane. Like, I understand why they think I'm insane. But at the same time, I think it's very true. Um, there's, and, and I think it's an important thing to pay attention to if you're an artist, because, um, how will I phrase this? If you don't pay attention to the things that are accidentally happening on your canvas or whatever your medium is, you're gonna miss a lot of really happy accidents that you could probably leave in. Um, and if you are so like hell bent on making it be what you want it to be, you could be fighting with it forever. Like it, it has some sort of that, I don't know what to call it, but like, <laughs> you know, it, it has its, its own 
spirit in a way. Once you start to put things together, um, things start to happen that you can't necessarily always control. And so you, I think something that I continue to learn as I continue to paint is that a lot of the time there's a better idea that is happening in front of me than the one that I started out with. And I'll miss it if I'm not looking for it. And that's also one of the reasons I think that um, I've had so much fun with these because it really is a very different approach than a lot of my other work. I usually, um, you know, if I'm doing work for a client where I'm doing a commission, part of the deal is that I'm going to make a study for them so that they can approve it, you know, and, and sure, this is, this is what we've agreed on. So now we know what's going on. Um, so there's a lot of planning that goes into it. Often also, like if I'm making just gallery work, um, like my own work, uh, something big, I will start, you know, with a smaller painting that's sort of a study where I'm working out different things. And that's a, a good and valid way to work, I think. But um, also, this is just completely different because other than having, you know, the palette and the photo, um, I don't have any plan, really. Uh, I'm just playing, <laughs> letting it happen. And it's, uh, it's really interesting and it's really fun. And I think it's also really um, contributed to the way I work when I work that other way that's much more planned out. Um, you know, anything you do changes the way you see things. That's why life is so interesting. So, oh, you're all the way over here. Huh. You are probably the most deliberate painter I have ever watched, like in terms of every stroke you take being, you know, carefully. Really? I think so. I mean, some people, I mean, a lot of painters I've noticed, they just kind of um, adjust things as they go, but mm -hmm. you, you look like you really, really contemplate where each stroke goes before it hits that board. I think when I'm working as a, like when I'm doing a portrait, uh, I definitely, I'm definitely doing that. And uh, I am looking twice as long as I, like when I would teach um, painting from life, like from a live model, I would tell them to look twice as long as they mixed their color or whatever and loaded up their brush and they then I would tell them to uh, um look at this point what would I say I don't remember what I would say basically like you better be looking at what you're going to put here twice as long as it's going to take you to put this down because then you're going to have a deliberate idea of what's going on and it's going to be right um or closer to closer to right hopefully i guess um but then also there are especially in like my larger paintings there are passages where i'm just like flinging paint around <laughs> <laughs> and things are happening and it's just like whoa that was fun maybe i'll keep that but i don't like that so you know i think when i'm working on like a figure um I, i'm very deliberate but then there are other parts of things that you guys aren't getting to see right now that are much more like sort of lackadaisical not lackadaisical but it's much more loosey-goosey and experimental um 
And one of the things that I really like about painting is that it gives you a chance to bring a form out of just strokes, but it also gives you a chance to like dissolve that form that you've made with another stroke. And um, I like that as a metaphor for also just like life. I think that everybody experiences the same thing a little bit differently. And so you need to remember that like your, your version isn't necessarily their version. And it's important also to, when you look at a painting, sort of remember that not it's a lie, but it's, you know, it's a fabrication. <laughs> it's me interpreting something through myself onto a thing and I've made a new thing. Um, but I really like having in my paintings sort of that very rendered area next to a very painterly area, um, just as like the look of the piece, but also as sort of that idea that like, Nothing, nothing, you, you'll never know everything. Nothing is ever like totally set. At least in my world. Okay. Yeah. That is quite amazing. I just realized the mouth is too high, but I'm not going to change it at this point. I will change it next time. But yeah, um, I can also show you, I can hold this up to my iPad and see if that works. So you guys can actually see the photo that I was working from. Wow. Closer up. Yeah. Very cool. It's not there yet. There's a lot of funny little issues I'm, that need to happen. Um, plus, it's always... I feel like super dangerous to show somebody the photo you were trying. <laughs> they're like, well, that doesn't look like him at all. Um, <laughs> he's getting there. He's getting there. It's coming. I yeah. think it's an excellent amount of work you got done in a little over an hour. My goodness. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I got more done than I thought I would, so that was nice, especially because I was talking. I'm never good at talking and painting. Oh, was um, it terrible talking while you were trying to concentrate? No, but I'm <laughs> sure I would have talked more cogently if I hadn't also been painting. I might have made more sense. <laughs> mm. Well, thank you so much, Annie. I think that was really wonderful.